Welcome back! I hope you're enjoying Luna the Lima's crochet along so far. This video is a supplement to the pattern. The video pertains to part 1 of the pattern and it's the second video of the series. Please check the description box below for more information about this crochet along. Today I'm going to show you how to make the armature for the hands or the feet and how to insert it. And once again I'm demonstrating on a foot but the method is almost identical for the hands. What I'll be showing you here is exactly the same as what's written in the pattern. This is just a supplement to help make the pattern easier to follow. To prepare for this part, you'll need at least one foot worked up to the end of row 11. Let's begin! Here I have the foot worked up to the end of row 11 and at this point the pattern tells you to make the armature. So begin by placing your foot on a sheet of paper and mark out the center tips of each digit. And then make a mark in the center of the opening at the bottom. Then draw a line to join each point to the center bottom point. And get some wire, measure about 20 centimeters. I'm just going to measure roughly because it's not that important. And make a bend. Then place that bend on your center point. The bend is on the center. And I'm going to hold the wire near my first digit mark. Pinch it there and make another bend. Then I'm going to grab some batting. Batting comes in big sheets. This is usually used to line a quilt or a jacket or something like that. And you just tear a little piece off. And I'm going to start wrapping the wire at the second bend. This is just to pad the wire so that it doesn't push out through the end of the fingertip. Then I'm going to carry on wrapping all the way down to the first bend. This really doesn't have to be perfect, you just need to have some padding on the wire. And then I'm going to wrap the working end of the wire around the batting to hold it in place. And there we go. One finger is done. Now you can bend your working wire back up, place it on your stencil. I'm just going to hook this in front there. Pinch it at the second mark and bend. And then wrap that one. This really doesn't have to be tidy. So long as you have this bend wrapped so that the stuffing doesn't get pushed down the wire when you stick it into the finger. Because it is quite a tight fit to get it into the finger. And then the only other thing is you need to make sure it's actually going to fit inside a finger. So you can try it on one of your spare fingers that you haven't used yet and see if it fits. fills that finger up completely so there's no space for stuffing. So we know it fits and we know the stuffing isn't going to move so I can do all of my fingers like that. I'm going to wrap the working wire around my stuffing like I did on the first finger.
It also doesn't matter if your stuffing doesn't go all the way down to the center point. It's kind of difficult to do this on camera, but it's much easier if you're not trying to work below a camera. The second finger is complete. So I'm going to wind my wire around and back up. And do the third finger the same. You can also use your pliers to twist the wire tighter if you need to. Just keep going in the same way until you have all five digits done. It is important to try and get the fingers to the, the correct length at least so that all of the fingers get filled up all the way to the tips when you put the armature inside the hand or the foot. There we have our fancy little skeleton. Now I'm going to trim the working wire to the same length as my starting end. And I'm going to just bend these over so that they don't stab me in the eyes. I forgot to film this part earlier, but we're also supposed to wrap this part of the wire with some batting as well. So I'm going to do that without removing it because I don't want to have to put it back in again. The pattern tells you to wrap the first four centimeters from this point where all the digits merge with batting. So I'm just going to wrap that up. And then twist one wire over the other to keep it in place. And trim off the excess. Since I've spent a large portion of my life making these tiny little white fingers and I don't want to make them dirty I washed my hands after working with the wire so that I don't get any marks on the white yarn and now I'm going to insert the armature into the foot this 
part is a little bit fiddly so just go slowly and be patient take your time it it's not easy but it's worth it I'm gonna get all these loose ends coming out here so that I know I'm not pushing them into the fingers and blocking up the fingers or toes whatever I'm just going to call them fingers I'm going to start slowly feeling my way around to see if I can get the ends to go into the finger holes. I'll see if I can get each end plugged into one finger. It helps if you can plug all four ends into the opening up the finger to begin with and then start easing them on and work each finger a little bit at a time and then move to the next one Now at this point on the hand you would want to put the thumb in as well. I'm just going to put this inside the big toe but there is so much space here you could wait a bit with the big toe. And once the wire starts getting closer to the end, you can sort of wiggle the fingertip down onto the wire till you feel the wire right at the end of the finger or the toe. There, I can feel all my fingers are nicely filled all the way to the end, which means if you get the wire going right up to the end, then your finger will be properly poseable. You can make three knuckles in it because there's enough space to actually bend it. You have enough wire here to bend it at the first knuckle. Now that the armature is in, you can carry on where you left off in the pattern. So in this case, it would be carrying on with row 12 of the foot. And the pattern says to stuff the foot softly as you go. So as you can see, this foot is completely flat. The fingers are actually completely filled up with the armature. So we don't need to add anything else inside there. So what I'll do is just put a tiny amount of stuffing just around the armature inside there so that it's just slightly padded and then for the big toe I will fill up the area around the armature and stuff the big toe softly so that it can still bend. I forgot to bring my stuffing with me today for the video so I'm just ripping up some batting to use as stuffing. It's a little bit stiffer than I would like but I don't have my stuffing with me. I'm going to use the back of a crochet hook to push the stuffing down inside the toe. Just 
using really small amounts at a time because I don't want that toe to be stiff. I just wanted to keep its shape. I'm keeping the toe quite flat as well, so when you look at it from the side, it's thinner than when you look at it from the top, which is a bit wider. Tiny amount of stuffing around the armature on both sides. Now I'm going to carry on crocheting until I get to row 27. As a side note, at the end of row 12, the pattern tells you to make a decrease, but there's only one stitch left to work into. But the pattern tells you to use up the first stitch of the same row in this decrease. So that means you're going to work your decrease into the last stitch of row 11 and the first stitch of row 12. Now because you've just worked into the first stitch of row 12 and used it up, the stitch marker now moves over by one stitch. Now it's going over the second stitch of the row instead of the first stitch. So you start your new row by working into that second stitch. So when you count your stitches for row 13, you'll start counting from the stitch. I've worked the foot up to the end of row 26 and stuffed it softly as I went. Row 27 of the pattern is where you differentiate between the left or the right foot. I'm going to work the left foot as a demonstration. Start by working 7 single crochets. Then bend the wire towards you. Then working over the wire, work one single crochet into the very next stitch. So that the wire gets sandwiched inside there between the two stitches. And from this point, the pattern is very simple and straightforward to follow, so I'm not going to show the rest of the foot. So there we have a finished foot. You can arrange the toes however you like and obviously pose them. I'm not going to bend my toes now because I want to keep them perfect until I've finished the lima and start bending and posing her for pictures. This is how the right foot looks. It's exactly the same as the left foot except that the wire comes out of this side instead of the left foot having the wire coming out of this side. As you can see the foot is still very thin. It's very lightly stuffed as it should be. It should be very skinny when you look at it from the side. And these wires you'll use to attach the foot to the leg when you get to that stage of the pattern. Thank you for watching, I hope you found this video helpful. Remember to subscribe so you don't miss the next video of the series. See you next time!